Our strategic objective has always been to grow reserves and production. And in line with the government's um, drive to achieve a national aspiration of 40 billion barrels of oil reserves and 4 million barrels uh, production uh, per day, including condensate, as captured in our 2020-20 uh, vision, we have increased exploratory activities in the offshore, onshore, and inland basins. That's a map of your inland basins. The following drilling activities to this end were carried out in 2012. A total of 19 exploration wells drilled, comprising of eight exploration wells in the joint venture and 11 um, under the production sharing contracts, the KSCs. 93 development wells were drilled, comprising of 55 development wells uh, under the joint venture and 38 development wells under the production sharing contracts. In the same year, 33 workover wells were also drilled, which consisted of 32 walkover wells under the JV and one under the PSCs. We have nine inland basins. The most prospective and prolific, of course, the Niger Delta Basin, as we all know, but others, Anambra and Chad, are also known to be rich in hydrocarbon. Exploration is being stepped up as we speak, and the entire inland basins, Chad, Anambra, Benue, Trough, Bida, Sokoto, and Dahomey. The increased exploration activity is reflected in the following. We have acquisition of a total of 6,000, over 6,000 square meters of seismic data, including 818 square meters um, that are acquired for frontier exploration service operations in the Chad Basin in phases three, four, and five combined. Acquisition of 266 uh, square meters of seismic data in phase six is ongoing. And we have also grown our IDSL land acquisition capacity by additional 300% wholly owned seismic party crews. Altogether, a total of over 24,000 square meters of seismic data has been processed and reprocessed in readiness for seismic operation. This is very important because the country has to prepare to diversify its hydrocarbon base. And of course, um, the results of that go without saying. If we cannot diversify our hydrocarbon base, uh, what will happen to the economy, particularly in the north of the country, will be amazing. And the trickle-down effects of that uh, will be equally robust over the years to come. Our DPC center has been uh, upgraded to the largest seismic data processing center, DPC seismic data processing, uh, in the West African sub-region with the processing capability today of 20,000 square meters from 2,000 square meters a couple of years ago. In terms of reserves addition, we added in 2012 600 billion barrels of reserves, representing 70% reserves replacement. Our crude oil reserve base stood at 36.8 billion barrels at the end of 2012, uh, representing a 0.06 decrease as compared to year-end 2011 figures. In the same way, our gas reserves also dropped by 0.01%. Again, this has been as a result of the incessant uh, fight we have been having uh, with vandals in the uh, crude and gas uh, uh, area. In line with our strategy of growing NPDC, NPDC is our exploration and production affiliate for NNPC, and it is the entity that is being grown into your national oil company. Through asset transfers, subsidiary production, NPDC's reserve base has grown to 1.7 billion barrels through strategic divestment initiatives. And you see that in the um, slides that follow. Our crude oil production including condensate, has been consistently maintained above an average of 2.3 million barrels per day, despite the bunkering. Of course, it had gone up to 2.62 million barrels. That was its peak in October of 2010, but we've been battling with the vandals since then. We have still managed to maintain it at 2.3 on average uh, daily production. It is clear that the incessant crude oil uh, vandalism and theft, not to, not to uh, mention the uh, illegal, what I call, firewood distilleries, which are not only 
uh, taking away our oil from bunkering, but also gravely, gravely endangering and impacting the environment in those areas from which the country may not recover in the next 20 years or more. And it is clear that um, we had to do something very, very aggressive and very quick. We have been working very hard with all the security agencies. We have worked very hard with the multinationals. And as you must have heard in the news over the last week or so, uh, NEC as well put together a committee headed by Governor Oduaha of Delta State. And uh, we have also been working with them uh, to ensure that uh, we all together try to bring this uh, scourge, which affects every Nigerian. As my minister colleague, Minister of Power, just said, it affects us in ways that you may never know. But when the economy of your country is directly impacted, then one way or the other, it affects the food that you put on your table at the end of the line. Therefore, as he has pointed out, every Nigerian needs to be involved in fighting the scourge of crude oil theft, because sooner or later, it will catch up with you. We have, in the last week, put together a very aggressive uh, project, along with the uh, JTF commanders in Rivers and Bielsa State, and the governors in that area. And we are happy to announce that, as of uh, today, the Trans-Niger pipeline that had been shut down, as he said, affecting the AFAM uh, power plant is coming back up into production because of what has happened over the last seven days or so. That will mean that very shortly uh, the drop in, uh, in power percentages of power to the grid that we have seen over the last two weeks uh, will be reversed over the next uh, few days. And we intend to put all aggressive efforts and funds into trying to ensure that uh, the sustained protection of the Trans-Niger pipeline and the Nimbe Creek Pipeline, which are critical for gas supply to our various arteries, um, are actually protected so that we can keep the gas flowing to the various uh, gas, uh, um, sorry, the various power plants. Now, the period under review also witnessed significant upstream activities, which helped improvement of overall industry performance. And I'll run through them. We had the Usan FPSO launched, which is a new deep offshore production sharing contract field, currently producing about 103,000 barrels per day. The President commissioned that um, a few months ago. In Nigeria's deep water, there is the Egina project, which has been awarded, and we expect, to, that we expect it to cost about $15 billion. It will provide us with an additional 180,000 barrels per day. In this same period, SPDC Total and AGIP provided an opportunity for participation, very importantly, by Nigerian upstream players, as our indigenous operators, with the divestment of eight blocks, which you all heard about, OMLs 4, 26, 30, 34, 38, 40, 41, and 42. And we are happy to say that that is now done with, and they are underway. NNPC and Mobile Producing Nigeria Joint Venture completed the Itut and Abang satellite field development project with the Abang and Itut platforms fabricated by Niger Dock in Nigeria and by Nigerians themselves. Uh, that was another major feat for us. <laughs> Following extensive negotiations, expired leases, some of them such as OML 67, 68 and 70 of NNPC Mobile Producing Nigeria JV were also renewed. An active participation of indigenous companies resulted in a number of new projects coming on board or on stream, such as the EBOC Terminal, uh, which is established by an indigenous company and has a current daily crude oil production uh, of 7,000 barrels per day and will have a plateau production of 50,000 barrels per day at full capacity. As part of improving our accountability with regards to Nigeria's oil production, we have also concluded a pilot scheme for real-time crude oil production monitoring. Again, this is very crucial going ahead. It is referred to as the National Product Monitoring System. And it is a, mo a remote monitoring system uh, that is in place not only to monitor real-time production, which is a primary function, but also other field parameters needed for the effective reservoir management and administration. 
In terms of NPDC, I think it's very important to point out here, and this is their growth scenario um, over the last few years, because um, when we came in, they were producing roughly 60,000 barrels per day by seeding equity and NPC's equity in a number of OMLs to them over the last two years, they are now um, approaching over 100,000 100, barrels per day. We expect that if we continue with the current growth scenario, by 2015, our national oil company should be producing at least 250,000 barrels a day. And I say it is important to mention this because government strongly supported by President uh, Jonathan, has put its full weight behind growing our national oil company. Yet, we see in the media every day accusations of how the Minister of Petroleum has signed over oil blocks uh, without approval and without um, permission. Now, let me say for the record once again, because I'm sure I said it last year, we have not held any oil bid so far. We have not held the marginal bid or the mainline uh, uh, bid yet. We will hold them, but it has not happened, so it would not have been possible to sign over any blocks to anybody. But the equity in those OMLs that were earlier mentioned was, as NNPC's equity, was signed over to NPDC, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of NNPC, not to any private individuals. We expect, therefore, that the strategic implica implication going forward is that NNPC's upstream business will be well endowed with quality assets to become a viable and vertically integrated national oil company. And these asset assignments that we have made over the last two years will ensure that NPDC becomes a medium-sized independent exploration and production company with future, future potential production in excess of 300,000 barrels per day. And I think that is a historic first for your country as well. In addition, uh, because of these blocks ceded to them, NPDC also currently supplies approximately 425 million stocks per day of natural gas into our domestic market to fulfill its domestic gas obligation uh, to the Federation. It plans to provide an additional 100 million stocks uh, of gas from the Oredo, Oredo gas um, plant, which we commissioned earlier this year, by the end of this year. And I think that is also wonderful news for our country. Now, historically, about 25% of gas was flared in Nigeria. 27% was used in the upstream for pressure maintenance, 40% was exported, and less than 10% has been utilized for power and other industry uses, which is what we are trying to change. In 2012, our total average gas production increased from 7.7 .7 billion stocks per day to 8.24 billion stocks per day, representing a 7% increase compared to 2011 uh, levels. Our upstream gas supply for power generation, industrial and household use has increased significantly over this period and it follows government's prioritization of gas supply to the domestic market. Specifically, there was an increase following our 12-month emergency gas supply initiative and program, which was necessary because when we came into this administration, it was clear that there was no defined plan for gas to power, to power the grids. And that was obviously a critical uh, issue for us to tackle, hence the 12 months emergency gas plan that we put into place. And this was to ensure that we were able to ramp up our gas supplies to be able to supply enough gas uh, to power the grids um, for the existing power plants. And over the next 18 months, new power plants that are coming onto the grid will also be ensured of gas supply as we have continued and extended our emergency supply plan. Again, this has been very significant for government. There was an increase in domestic gas supply to support the power, uh, power sector with over 250 million stocks of gas as part of that emergency supply program. In addition, I must say that gas supply development is being advanced and up till two weeks ago, when um, this further spate 
of vandalization knocked off uh, our TNP Trans Niger pipeline, uh, amongst others, we had, I think, an excess in terms of gas supply uh, to our power grid. So despite our significant progresses, because of that, we um, suffered some setbacks in the last two weeks, which impacted negatively on gas supply to power. And I think it's necessary to point out to all Nigerians so that we understand the significance, as the Minister of Power said himself. There were three significant events. Firstly, the vandalization of the Estragos Lagos Pipeline System A gas pipeline at Baramatsu on the 22nd of June. These are very recent. Secondly, the vandalization of the Trans Niger Pipeline in the east on the 16th of July, which resulted in the eventual shutdown of gas supply to Afam Power plants, and also reservoir challenges uh, that we had at Oben Gas Plant, which resulted in restriction of supply to Sapala Power Plant as well. But I am very pleased to say that um, NGC, the gas company, has commenced repairs on the Bloon pipeline, it's supposed to be completed by the end of September, and Shell has announced, just as we did, uh, that it has completed repairs of the Trans Niger pipeline, and that um, with the uh, aggressive efforts of the uh, security forces and us, the combined efforts, they will be up and running within the next 24 hours, so stabilization should happen within the next 72 hours, and that will restore the greater quantum of our power that was lost on these grids. So I'm very pleased about that. It is important also to note that gas to non-power sector in this period has almost doubled from 185 million scuffs to 357 million scuffs, providing feedstock that has supported the recent aggressive growth in the nation's cement sector, as well, of course, as other manufacturing companies. To date, over 200 manufacturing um, uh, sectors, industries are running on natural gas and the number continues to grow daily as our NGC builds more pipeline infrastructure. And underpinning the supply growth in terms of gas were successful efforts in infrastructure expansion that we must talk about as well. More acceptable commercial environments and of course as I said the gas supply emergency specifically on infrastructure. Over 300 kilometers of new gas pipelines have been completed and commissioned in this period. These include the 190 kilometer Oben Geregu line, the 120 kilometer Eskravos Oben line, the 25 kilometer Itoki Oluronshogo line, and the Imo River Alaoji pipeline as well. In addition, 340 kilometers of pipeline segments from Oben Lagos is ongoing and is due to be completed within six months. This infrastructure expansion is the most aggressive Nigeria has seen in over 40 years. By the end of 2013, the nation's gas backbone, which is the Estrabos Lagos pipeline that we call ELPS, would have doubled its capacity to 2.2 billion cubic feet per day, creating one of the largest capacity gas pipelines in the whole of Africa and creating a major supply artery for a majority of our nation's power plants. Specifically, as a result of the infrastructure expansion, all completed power plants such as Giregu, Lurunshogo, Motoshaw, Ihovo, and Alaoji now have permanent and adequate gas supply pipeline connection. <laughs> we therefore expect that over the next few days, there will be sufficient gas and that by year end, we will be able to support over five gigawatts of generating capacity in terms of gas. And of course, the Minister of Power intends to increase that uh, over the next uh, uh, few months. Over the last two years, we have, as I said, grown NPDC into a major gas supplier. and. Um, reduce our gas flaring as a percentage of gas produced progressively. But recognizing the potential for tremendous economic growth inherent in our vast natural gas resources, President Goodluck Jonathan Howard outlined, outlined a three-point mandate for natural gas, which comprised a boost in gas supply to the power sector, stimulation of gas-based industrialization around fertilizer, petrochemicals, methanol, CPFs, LPG, etc., 
effectively leveraging gas as feedstock instead of fuel, which I've said severally, for key industries, so that we commercialize gas in the real sector and ensure that we begin to use gas to create um, uh, jobs and employment generation. And of course, selective investment in high value regional pipeline and LNG export opportunities to boost revenues, to boost revenue from gas sales. We have been pursuing Mr. President's mandate very aggressively. And to deliver on this ambitious man mandate, we have targeted interventions um, which we expect to rapidly transform the relatively young Nigerian domestic gas sector in a very short time. Now, the interventions are all aimed at creating a sustainable growth in this sector. And I'm spending a little time on gas because I think gas is the way of the future for Nigeria. With 187 trillion cubic feet of um, discovered potential and 600 trillion cubic feet of undiscovered, undiscovered potential, it is clear that very soon Nigeria will be known as a gas ENP country as opposed to a crude ENP country. So it is important that we delineate very clearly what is being done in the gas sector at this time. Now, some of these interventions, apart from the gas supply emergency, also include aggressive implementation of our infrastructure, gas revolution, industrialization, and commercial framework for domestic gas. I've already discussed the um, gas emergency initiative, but um, I will point out that Oredo gas plant, which has been commissioned, will supply us, has supplied us with an additional 100 uh, million scops of gas. Escrabos, 190 million scops. And um, we have extended this emergency initiative. We expect 150 million scops additionally uh, by the end of the year. Based on what has been put in place and what is being put in place, we expect that um, the gas supply growth will continue to improve and grow steadily over the coming months and years. And it will ensure that we boost or we support the boosting of power supply to Nigerians. So while there is still some gap, which is a challenge, between the power sector demand and gas supply, as I mentioned, we expect to con continually bridge that gap over the next 18 months. As a result of these interventions, our domestic gas supply in the country has grown to its highest level ever, at 1,500 million scops per day, from 900 million scops in 2010. And that growth is expected to continue to grow to 1,630 million scops per day by end of this year. Within this growth, gas to power grew by 72% from 60, 620 million scops per day in 2010 to 1,065 million scops per day currently. And by the end of this year, it would have risen to 1,195 million scops per day, which is an almost twofold increase uh, since 2010. I think the following slides all show uh, the issues that link gas to the wider economy. But we are running. No, he, he was on it already. <laughs> In addition to all that I've said, the contracts for the vital 120 kilometer east west gas pipeline, which crosses the River Niger, was awarded and is progressing with a target completion time of 2015. Engineering work is almost complete and the contractors have mobilized significant construction equipment to site ahead of commencement of construction works. This pipeline creates a major linkage between the huge gas reserves in the eastern Niger Delta and other parts of the country. So when completed, uh, what happens is that shortfalls in gas supply to power that are currently obtaining in the western area will be adequately and permanently mitigated and we will have excess flows from the east via this very critical pipeline. And finally, a very critical element of our infrastructure uh, expansion in terms of gas pipelines is the Calabar, Ajaukuta, Abuja, Kano pipeline. And this is now our major focus of attention. Major engineering reviews of this 1,000 kilometer long pipeline have now been concluded. And plans are underway to jumpstart it by the end of the year, um, between the end of the year and early 2014. Opening up 
gas access to the east and of course to the northern part of Nigeria is what this critical pipeline will do. We expect that we will spend over $600 million deployed from Eurobonds, which the Ministry of Finance is currently assisting us uh, to deploy to jumpstart this pipeline by the end of the year. So by end 2015, gas access to Abuja should have been established. And Kaduna Kano thereafter. I think very, very critically, this will open up the northern half of our nation for industrial revitalization. We had also achieved major milestones in our reform efforts in commercial frameworks for domestic gas, and we've been asked about this severally. I think I've mentioned it before. This is a critical necessity. If we are going to sustain multi-billion dollar investments in supply growth, you have to have the right pricing framework to ensure that the investors come in and it is a competitive uh, investment climate. In the period under review, Gas prices have been reviewed to more commercially viable levels within the domestic market with a view to achieving export parity pricing by the end of 2014. So from gas prices which were as low as 10 cents per million BTU a few years ago, which is a price level that could not obviously cover the cost of production, we have had to review the pricing and we have implemented this review. So today, Gas prices have increased to $1.50 per million BTU in 2013, and they will increase further to $2 per million BTU by the end of 2014, that's next year. This will create pricing levels that can sustain the very necessary investment in development in this area. Now this has been a very major milestone for us because it has been a 30-year challenge to attract investment into our domestic gas sector. And we must have the requisite investment coming into the domestic gas uh, sector to ensure that all the nominal issues that I have um, delineated here actually take place. From LPG for our home cooking to investments uh, in our industries and manufacturing, etc., etc. Now you will also recall that in 2011, Mr. President launched the uh, Gas Revolution Initiative, which was a major initiative that we wanted to kick off with fertilizer plants, petrochemical plants, etc. We had teething problems with major land issues uh, in Delta State, in, uh, where the original land that had been put aside for this project was. Uh, with the help of the governor, uh, we have overcome those teething pro uh, problems and have now acquired or been given another major piece of land. And we are moving ahead very aggressively with our, initiative, our initial uh, mobilization. The location is now Ogidigbe in Delta State, where the gas industrial city uh, will be placed. It will be the largest gas-based industrial park in Africa. And mobilization for site clearing is ongoing as we speak. It will house Africa's largest petrochemical, fertilizer, and gas processing plants creating over 100,000 jobs during the construction phase. Construction phase is expected to end by 2016, and by that time we have expected that many million, millions of jobs uh, post-commencement and during operation, operation will be created through 2017 and 2018. I think it's worth mentioning that the Ministry of Petroleum Resources is in collaboration with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment and the Minister and Ministry of Transport uh, to ensure that there is seamless alignment of all aspects um, of this project that needs to make this historic project um, move forward very robustly. As we speak, work has begun on site and the early crews are working on soil testing, geotechnical surveys, etc., etc. So we are very pleased about that. And if you watch this space, I'm sure over the next two months, you will hear more exciting news about the gas industrialization project in Ogidengbe. In other initiatives, it is worth noting that you will also hear news over the next couple of months about our efforts to champion key gas penetration initiatives. In doing that, and with a joint venture with NIPCO, NNPC and NIPCO, 
have worked very hard on the compressed natural gas initiative for vehicular use. It may interest Nigerians to know that um, our pilot project and pilot initiative is fully up and running in Benin City. In this period of time, we have converted over 2,000 cars in Benin City uh, to now run on natural gas and not petrol or diesel. As we speak, there are already six gas filling stations for compressed natural gas all around Benin City. And uh, it is being used most dominantly by taxi drivers because the cost of running your car on compressed natural gas is far, far lower than the cost of running your car on petrol or even uh, uh, diesel. Uh, so we are now beginning to mobilize to expand this initiative across other major cities of the country. In so doing, we expect that over the next four years or so, there will be a major reduction in the cost of transportation uh, throughout Nigeria. Now, <laughs> I see he has jumped from 30 minutes to five without 15 minutes in between. So let me run through, our, we have our midstream oil segments where um, we have a product supply and distribution system that consists of about 5,000 kilometers of pipeline network, as many of you know. We have our three refineries, which are currently undergoing a very robust uh, turnaround maintenance. The Portacot refinery should be finished um, by the uh, last quarter this year, and then Wari, and then, uh, sorry, Kaduna, and then Wari will go on, and they should be finished in terms of, in terms of the time by end of next year. Uh, so we expect that, um, that that will go quite well. In terms of greenfield refineries, we stepped back a bit because of the constraints on the three that we were planning in terms of the heavy loans we were expected to take from China and the load burden, load burden on the country. But we are mobilizing to move forward with the Lagos greenfield refinery. And the schedule for that is um, being worked as we speak. I'm rushing through uh, because of the time constraints. I must point out as well that interventions in our refineries have been accompanied by upgrades in our PPMC facilities as well across the nation. Because after many years of being inoperable due to pipeline vandals and vandalization, our Portacot ABA product line has been rehabilitated and uh, the ABA product depot was recommissioned in this period of time after seven years of inactivity. This has enabled products to be sent directly from Potapot Refinery to ABA for onward distribution to eastern parts of the country. ABA Enugu product pipeline is expected to be completed and recovered fully by the third quarter of this year. And that is another major uh, milestone. Similarly, our Wari Benin product pipeline has been recovered. And the Benin depot has also been recommissioned. That happened in January this year. Uh, we expect very shortly to be commissioning the recovered Gombe uh, depot as well uh, within the next uh, month or so. Other lines recovered so far have been Kaduna Suleja, Kaduna Gusau, Suleja Mina, Kaduna Joss, and Joss Gombe, and all these depots are now fully operational, and this has happened over the last two years as well. We are aggressively working on the recovery of the remaining product pipelines and depots namely Enugu to Makordi, Gombe to Maiduguri, and Makordi to Yola. And I think it's extremely important when you know the ease of living and business that the recoveries of these depots are providing for the citizens and quality in the areas uh, in which they have been restored. Uh, so that is a key initiative as well. I will go straight now uh, to talk very quickly about uh, some of the areas such as NNPC retail, which is not always spoken about, uh, but is a key component of what we do, and which has engaged the services of more than 400 trucking companies over the last two years, with a total of about 3,500 trucks, again ensuring that employment generation and job creation is moved steadily through our economy, as well as, of course, owners of several seagoing barges to transport these uh, uh, products as well. And they have therefore created employment for hundreds of thousands of Nigerians 
while generating and supporting massive economic activity within the country. They have also commenced the sale of LPG into the domestic market and before the end of 2013, uh, we expect to see that moving forward very, very robustly as part of our government's efforts to ensure that the public secures easy access to cooking gas at affordable prime kerosene and of course firewood, uh, which are not environmentally friendly at all. Uh, in the first phase of this activity, the retail company will inject about 100,000 branded cylinders into the market and within the next three months, uh, you will see them coming out in a massive drive to ensure that families get the LPG. They have also ventured into the lubricants market. Uh, by quarter one 2013, this happened in order to expand our customers' choices um, and access to competitive prices for these products. We are also, in, and also entering into marine fuel bunkering business by quarter four of this year as well. Um, and again, this is to streamline and standardize the business of marine bunkering in the country and again to transform the sector into a more profitable, uh, reputable industry and to create uh, jobs as well. I must uh, talk before I finish because there are so many things obviously in this sector it would be difficult to talk about all of them. But I think that in the uh, bags that you've been given you will see um, a book on the 2012 achievements of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources that covers many of these areas. But before I finish, let me talk about our increased Nigerian content and the sustained local capacity, which is very critical for this country. I think at no other time in Nigeria's history have we seen the sort of support that President Goodluck Jonathan, through the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, has given to indigenous operators and indigenous uh, marketers in the downstream service sector to come into the upstream, midstream, and downstream of this sector and stand their own, take their own space in this sector for the betterment of our country and our economy as we go ahead. And you saw me in the CD that we played or the DVD we played at the beginning saying that I was standing uh, in, that was in the PPMC loading dock, newly built and refurbished after it was uh, bombed by vandals a few years ago. And Lee Engineering, a wholly owned indigenous company, had done the complete refit and the complete refurbishment. And this is happening all over Nigeria now. And it is happening because... <laughs> it is happening because Mr. President has put his full weight and support behind indigenous participation through the Nigerian Content Act, as well as other areas of the petroleum sector. As we speak, marine vessels of various categories, wholly owned by Nigerians, increased from 54 in 2011 to 180 by the end of 2012. These vessels are category one type vessels. While vessel categorization schemes of the Nigerian Content Development Management Board made more Nigerian-owned Category 2 vessels and increased the number of Nigerian-owned vessels, vessels to 208 in quarter one of 2013. So you'll find that its investments in reception, storage, and distribution facilities, jetties, depots, trucks, vessels, and modern retail outlets um, have all increased over this uh, um, uh, period. And this effort has led to over 18 days PMS sufficiency in this country at any point in time. We have also increased our assets in land, swamp, and offshore rigs, which is a key, key performance indicator, I must say, of business growth in Nigerian service companies. And it's something to be very proud about. Nigerian companies are now forming partnerships for deep water rig ownership, never done before and have put in place strategies that will increase rig ownership from the current 26 to 31 by 20 end of this year. So a lot is happening and it is cre creating employment in Nigerian content for over 30,000 Nigerians and of course creating wealth and increasing our technological know-how. And so finally, um, I won't talk about PTDF and the training facilities that we have put in place because of time, but it is quite clear that PTDF is doing a lot of work in terms of training Nigerians at bachelor's and master's levels both in Nigeria and outside this country to come and take their positions within the industry which as the Minister of Power mentioned 
uh, to do with power is critical if we are to sustain this sector and sustain Nigerian participation, know-how, knowledge, and technological transfers of capaci capacity and capability building over the next few years. So that is key, and PTDF is doing a lot. Our hydrocarbon pollution restoration project is fully underway, um, and it will ensure that all areas that are hit by environmental and pollution damage caused by the industry um, will be uh, um, worked on and will be rehabilitated uh, over the next few years. It has already done major things such as adequate signage inform information in Ogoni land. Drinking water tanks have been provided and are being distributed across Ogoni land. Health assessment teams are being mobilized. They've developed a medical registry. Water testing and air pollution facilities are being sourced as we speak. Land has been donated for centers of excellence. This is in Ogoni land in particular. And, and of course, 24-hour emergency call centers. But this will be replicated um, in any areas across the, ne the, the country that are impacted by hydrocarbon spillages and pollutions in the future. And finally, I cannot stop this discourse without talking about the petroleum industry bill. Because I think that that was a major, major achievement for the administration in the last two years. It is a bill that, as you know, amalgamates over 16 existing laws uh, in the oil and gas sector that have been there um, um, for quite a long time. And it has taken 12 years in the making. We worked very, very strenuously on it. And it is now, as you know, under the purview of the National Assembly, um, awaiting promulgation into law. But since the hearings have begun, I think it is not necessary to go into the various aspects of the bill, except to say that when promulgated into law, it will, of course, form the strategic basis for the entire transformation and reforms that will carry this sector into the next 10, 15, 20 years and beyond very robustly and ensure that there is transparency and accountability in the sector and that the revenues accruing to the nation from this sector um, are much more robust. While, of course, trying to ensure that we maintain our competitiveness in the understanding that all over Africa, other nations are finding and exploring for oil and we intend to remain competitive and we intend to continue to partner well with our, our international partners as well. And so all in all, ladies and gentlemen, I think over the last two years, a lot of work has been carried out within the oil and gas sector, some of which I obviously cannot go into here today. I would urge that all of you look at the paper, uh, the, the booklet we have given out to you in terms of our achievements within 2012, but also understand that the oil and gas sector is a very vast, deep, and complex uh, sector. But it is one that we are beginning to ensure affects the bottom line of every Nigerian's existence in the country. So it affects our economy, it affects our revenues, but every Nigerian, I think, by the end of this administration will begin to feel that in one way or the other, they have received directly and indirectly the benefits of the abundant resource that we are privileged to have in this country. I thank you for listening.